Hey, what's going on guys? I know I haven't made a video in quite a while and I decided to make a new video. So I wanted to talk about my uh, PRL cold air intake and um, just wanted to give you my thoughts about it and my final testimony. This video is mainly for people you know, who have no intake and for 8th or 9th gen who um, currently have no intake and they're looking into getting one or for those people who currently have a short RAM intake and they wanted to compare or and see what it is like to have the cold air. So before I get started, I know my last video was about, you know, me getting caught racing or whatever. So a little bit about that. No, I did not get my car towed, did not get impounded, I did not get my license suspended. I did, however, ended up getting a citation that night for quote unquote unsafe speed. And um I know it could have been a lot worse, but yeah, I'd have a uh, citation coming my way but yeah so getting into the uh, PRL cold air intake a few things I want to cover is uh, fitment sound and performance first off why did I get a cold air intake over the PRL short ram well that's pretty simple answer um I did not want any heat soak so when you have no heat soak is when you have more proven power and I know Vit um, made a recent blog about this, about how the short RAM intakes usually have a, a power loss. So getting into the fitment, this thing is really, really light. I mean, um, compared to the stock air box that has, you know, the snorkel and all the plastics and and uh, all like the air filters, you know, this thing is really light. It's a two piece, upper piece, a lower piece and the uh, air filter itself. And that's about it. I mean, it's very light. I think the the filter itself is heavier than the intake piping, so yeah. And it's definitely under 10 pounds for sure. Another thing is that the filter sits pretty low. And that's like usually behind the fog light or that front fender. So what a lot of people like to do is uh, remove that driver's side fog light so they can get that direct airflow on the cold air intake. So. I guess that could be a, a plus for some people. Um, another thing is that if you were to compare this to the Skunk 2 cold air intake for the 9th gen, and I'm speaking for those who have RBC, you'll notice that you have to buy the Skunk 2 adapter, the coupler adapter, for it to work with the RBC. And if you look at the design on it, it's not a straight shot. It's kind of this awkward off design. And um, to me, that kind of bothered me. So. I decided to go with the PRL cold air because of that. Also with the Skunk 2, I believe you have to splice some wires, some electrical wires, and I didn't want to mess with any of that stuff. So, um, One downside about the fitment is that when it comes to the uh, replacement coolant hose that they give you in the package, I don't know if mine was defective or not, but it didn't really align properly and um, you kind of had to twist it and basically I didn't want to risk it if you know the hose was going to explode on me you know once the heat expands it and whatnot so I stayed using the OEM hose and that's working fine but um, in the beginning it would heat up the upper piece of my intake so <laughs> I was getting hot air but I found a fix for that drove to AutoZone and bought some heat reflecting tape wrapped it a little bit and now it seems to work fine so sound wise one thing to note is that there is a slight hissing on light throttle on let's say if you're daily driving and this is speaking from like 1000 rpm to like 3k a normal light throttle you tend to hear this hissing noise and basically what that is is just the intake sucking in air i mean it's a pretty big uh, air filter so i guess that's why and especially if you have it paired up with the uh, j37 throttle body it, it, it can get pretty deep it can get, it, it has okay on on low end it has this uh, this low end growl when under wide open throttle and but when you go on the top end it's just like it gets way louder and you can definitely hear that crossover that a lot of people like to hear yeah it's a, it's a nice sounding this is really good for tunnel blasting I'd say or any intake in general on, on the Civic SI but I mean this one it sounds really nice so moving on to performance 
I would say you're not going to see any noticeable gains until you're tuned. But once you are tuned, you're going to feel a greater throttle response and definitely more power throughout the RPM band and top end. So basically, going back to it, pros of this intake, it has great sound, has great power gains, and no heat soak. And I guess you can say that you can remove the driver's side fog light if you want to get more direct airflow on it. I guess that's a good argument over the short ram. The short ram cannot do that. But the only con is that the Puro coolant hose didn't fit properly. And again, I don't know if I got a defective product. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, that's my honest testimony. Would I say this is a good purchase? I would say so. Yes, it is. Definitely seed power gains. And um, I'm more of a performance person than sound. So, yes, the sound is a plus. But I was mainly going for gaining more performance. So, I would say yes, this is a good buy. Especially because I'm from Southern California where it's usually, it's usually warm weather, you know, year-round. So... Having a short round would not really cut it. So yeah, um, if at any point in time you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and share. It really helps me out and hopefully see you guys on the next one. So this is what I meant by it being a loud intake. Um, I'm going to give you a quick example. This thing gets louder than my exhaust and I had the Q300 so here's a, here's a quick example. This is third gear. Cheers.